Today's video has over 15 Christmas crafts, so keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. All right, number one is going to be the snowflake sign. I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I got on clearance. Well, it's not ribbon, it's actually like a rope. And I think I got it from Walmart. And this is a ornament from Dollar Tree. Very pretty snowflake. Then we have this wallpaper, these little like panels of wallpaper that come from Dollar Tree and they're like a peel and stick, real easy to use. And this is a sign that I'm repurposing that I made for fall last year. It's just two pieces of um, the long signs glued together on the back with popsicle sticks. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn these in the way that I would like for them to be on the sign. And I'm going to line them up here and then just use my rotary blade and cut them off on the bottom. It did slide and my husband was talking to me. I got a little distracted and I cut too much. That's not going to be a problem because I have trim for this, so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Now I'm just going to peel off that first little panel like the directions say on the back. I'm lining it up on the side. Just going to hold it down and then get ready to grab the next piece. And before I press it down, I'm going to grab my long wooden ruler and just press it flat as I pull the backing away. If you do it like this, you won't have the bubbles and things like that. It'll just lay completely down and there won't be a chance for any air to escape, get bubbly in there. And I'm going to do... The same thing on this side, I'm going to peel the little strip off first, line it up, press my ruler down, peel that up, and then press it out as I am peeling it. I'm just going to lay it right over the top instead of cutting it off. I had a little excess where I got out of line here, so I'm just going to use this little blade and cut that off. Okay, and it looks good so far. You see where I've got that extra little gap up there on the top? It'll be covered though. All right, so since I did that, I've decided to add a piece of rope here and use my other, my little white trim also. I'm just going to use my glue gun and protecting my fingers. I'm going to go not on the edge, but rather close to the edge, just kind of allowing for the width of that rope and I'm going to press it down into the edge of the board and I do cut that tape off later by the way I don't think I have that recorded but there's some tape on the end of the rope it just keeps it from fraying but I do take that off once it's glued down so it will look better all right and I'm gonna go all the way to the corner now I'm using a clip to hold that corner there and it's rather difficult with a thicker rope to make a tight square corner but um and so it kind of curves a little bit it doesn't bother me if it bothers you you might want to try like a thinner rope or a jute or something like that um but there is a solution for that because you can kind of see the edge of the board underneath it behind the rope you see there before i clamped it but i'm going to fix that don't worry same process here. I'm just going to start in the corner and I'm going to go around. And this time I'm just going to put the bead of glue right next to that rope and on the board. And that way we don't have any squishing out and making a mess. We're just going to continue around all the way on the inside. And this gives it a little bit, bit of an extra layered look. And I like it. I think that it the colors of the ropes together they kind of reflect what's going on in the snowflake so I think they look good together but you can tell me what you think okay so we're gonna go around and around and around just like that until we get back in the corner now when we get in the corner you can take your scissors kind of cut it a slant and then put some glue inside of the pieces of rope that's still there and then you can just press it down and it won't come unraveled. 
Okay, so you see the corner here? I'm going to take my little bull nose pliers for those who are asking, that's what they're called, and just cut the corners off of each corner. All right, so with the snowflake, I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep that ribbon on there or not, and I just decided to take it off. It needs a little bit of help. There's a little bit of issue here. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on the back. I'm going to cover up the hole that's in the front. I'm just kind of scratching it down with my fingernail so it won't come off. I'm going to take some of this lightweight spackling and just go right down in that little hole to help cover it up. It's not completely camouf camouflaged now, but it's better. And just using the back of my rubber spatula as a scraper, I just take the excess right off. If you don't put the tape on the back, it'll just squish right out the back. So I noticed that the Believe word was not centered, and it was kind of driving me nuts a little. So very, very carefully, I just popped it right off there. Look at that. Now I'm just kind of measuring to see where is going to be the center. So I can get my snowflake relatively in the center of this sign. I'm just using a pen. Um, that was the closest thing. I do find a pencil later, but the pen is what I have. So now I have a little guide. And I can place this back down right in the correct spots. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Looking for my little guidelines and just popping it back down. Just pressing it and I'm just taking a little time to remove little extra spider webs and stuff off of it from the, the glue, you know, the glue webs. I'm just pressing it down really well. Now, since I want to try to make this a little bit straighter, I'm just taking my ruler and then a pencil, marking it. And under that B2, so that it goes right back where it needs to go. A little fancy glue work there. And then I'm going to flip it back over, line it up with those little marks I made, and then press it down as well. I like how they did this piece so you know thumbs up for Dollar Tree because that that little piece of the metal sign has like a little rusty tarnish on it and it looks really good I think they have these in a smaller too but I like the big one for this okay so I have these little ornaments which I also think came from the Dollar Tree but I'm not certain because I took took the packaging off of it and I was trying to think of how I would want these to go on my sign but I decided that I wanted them kind of centered on the size of Believe so, and they're puffy, like the little pillows, kind of stuffed. So I'm trying to hold them down so that they will glue down straight instead of trying to roll off to the side. Kind of making sure that they're where they're supposed to be. And then once the glue is dried, this is how it looks. And then I'm just going to use a simple hanger on the back. What do you think about this one? Alrighty, so now we're going to go to the gnome wreath. Here's a little gnome pick that came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to just pop him right off of there. It's pretty easy to do. Just be careful that you don't break them. They, sometimes they, they'll try to tear and break. This is a, I think this came from Dollar Tree. Yes, I believe it did. It's an 18 inch wreath form and it's got the little tinsel stuff on it. I'm going to use my rotary cutter, my rotary mat. I'm going to use a variety of ribbons and I do add a burlap ribbon to that too and then I'm going to use a little bit of these rolls of deco mesh. Now these are just pieces that I had left and I'm going to be cutting these into strips. I'm going to use, I'm going to cut 14 pieces of the black and white and I'm going to cut 7 pieces of the red. We're going to make, now I'm confusing myself, <laughs> we're going to make seven bundles, two of the check and one of the red. So they'll look like this and I'll show you how we do that. I use my little clips to hold them for me so I can get a lot done at once. I'm just going to roll these on the mat, just simple, 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 rolling it up and then I'm going to put the clamp on it, put it to the side, going to get the red one that's going to go in the middle, roll it up next. 
I mean, I'm trying to make sure that the ravelly pieces go downward. So that's what I'm looking at there to make sure that the edge is to the back. I don't want that rough edge in the front. So if they're all pointed down, then when I place them down on the wreath, those little raggedy edges will be hidden by the wreath. So one more time. Here we go. If you are interested in this type of crafting and you like what I do here on my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. We are over 7,000 now and it is just the best community of like-minded crafters and sweet people and um, the support is just amazing. I'd love to have you as part of our family. Now for the sad little wreath. It was kind of squished like an egg and I had to fix it. I had to just bend that flimsy wire and now I'm just kind of lifting up to see what I've, I've never used this type of wreath from Dollar Tree so I've, I kind of wanted to see what we had going on. If you want to show me some love you can buy me a coffee. You can see the link in the description box below. So there are pieces on here that mm, it's just flimsy to be honest but it's perfect for, for this. It is perfect for like a mesh wreath for me I think because I didn't need a bunch of greenery and it's really sparse on here and there was a gap on one section but I fixed it with a zip tie. Okay so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take two little pieces of, ten, of the little garland I guess you could call it and they're side by side and we're just going to tuck that bundle down in it and wrap the little branches around it. I'm going to do the same thing here. I didn't have to count. I just went down about the same. You can see here what I've done. So that the ends are almost touching. They're kind of over like end to end maybe I guess you could say once you get them placed down. I'm sorry I can't be more specific with that but I did not count these. Um, but you can see what I'm doing here so that you don't have any big gaps between them. You want them to just touch. And then once you get all seven of those on there, this is how it looks. And I think it looks pretty good as is, right? Pretty good. So now we're going to start with our ribbons. Um, the green and the red and the burlap that you will see are wired. And this other one with the holly is not wired. Three of the ribbons I used came from Dollar Tree and the red one is one I got at the thrift store. But I'm going to cut these in eight inch pieces. just like that and then once you get your pieces you can see here that the green bundle I had three and I have four of the beige like the burlap beige burlap one and then you're gonna just go through and with each one of them go ahead and dovetail all of your ends this is just gonna give it a prettier appearance there you go that's how you dovetail if you didn't know and then I'm going to decide how I want to put my ribbons down and I know that I want that pretty pattern on top. So I'm just going to cross it over in an X and then put this one right down the center. I'm going to squeeze the sides and press them toward each other just like that. Just walking your fingers toward each other. I hold it with my thumb and my fingers of the other hand. Then you're going to go down to whichever bundle you want to start on. Untwist it, holding everything down. Press it in tightly and then twist your little branches right around it. I think a good part of this wreath, um, one of the better points for it, is that you're not going to have to cut anything off when you're done. There will be no more wires or anything that you have to remove or try to cover up wires because it's already in greenery so it looks great. Okay, so the first one we put down was one with the green, and this is one with the beige. So we're going to alternate. There were seven, so we're going to do green, beige, green, beige, like that. Right on the top of each little bundle. And I'm just kind of playing around with it as I go. And you're going to continue around with your pattern. When we get to the end, and there we are. And it's a good possibility. I have two of the same ones side by side. You know, it, it's a good possibility. As a matter of fact, now editing the video, I can clearly see that that's what I did. But that's okay. I don't even mind. I don't mind. I'm not mad about it at all. 
All right, so you want to go through here and touch every single piece of that ribbon, every bit of it. You want to make sure nothing is at a weird, wonky angle. You want to make sure everything is uncurled, unfurled, puffed up, pressed out, whatever you want to call it. And it's a gorgeous wreath right now by itself, right? It looks really nice right how is it, uh, what it is, but we're going to add to it with our little gnome. I'm going to take my little sticker off the back. We don't want him to be looking like many pearl in there. And then I'm going to use two pipe cleaners. These are long. I'm not going to cut them down. I'm going to use some hot glue. Press it down in there. Kind of roll it around a bit so it's covered up. And then just a piece of paper on top. And that'll hold it. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Press it in there. And then I'm going to take my piece of paper. Press right down on there. Once the glue is dried, we're going to go ahead and apply him down. I'm going to use the, I'm just going to kind of go in between my bundles so that I'm not swishing anything that's pretty. And I'm going to go down to the wire base and wrap it around. Simple, simple. He's kind of centered. Just, you know, kind of wanted to get an idea of where he was at so that he's centered and not looking silly. I don't want him off to the side. And then you can see here, I'm just working through and in between. And then you can either cut that off if you want or just tuck it down in there and it'll be hidden. It'll be fine. And then you have kind of two options with the look. Um, right here, I'm showing you how it looks. If you overlap your little ribbon tails on top of him, he looks kind of sunken back or, you know, like he's kind of hidden in there. Or, like I'm doing now, I'm showing you that you can do it by poking the little tails behind him so that he really takes center stage and he's standing out in the front. So it's whichever you want, whichever way that you like it the best, you know. If you want the wreath to get more of the attention or the gnome, totally up to you. Alright, so we're going to add some frosted greenery in. And I believe that's Dollar Tree really really pretty greenery this year and his beard is frosty and his the little ball in his hat is frosty so I thought a little frosted uh, greenery here would be pretty and I'm just gonna put these in here and there all over wherever it looks good you can see me kind of moving it around a little bit I'm trying to make sure that the end is actually sitting against something so it won't fall out so I want to make sure that it is like tucked into something so the glue has something to harden against and it has something to hold on to that's what I'm doing here a little bit more and I just decided I did not like this tree so you know what I'm gonna take it off I'm just using this little spatula here that I use on so many things. It's all dented and scratched. You can see my face in there. And I'm just carefully going through so that I don't tear too much paper. And I do have a little boo-boo, but that's okay. Again, we're going to fix that. If I got upset every time I made a mistake, I would never craft. And I'm just being honest with you. I wouldn't. Because I have lots of boo-boos. All right, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and this little brush, this little flat brush. And I'm just going to go around, kind of go around his little fingers here on his hands. I do this, uh, I did a little outline part, the little extra where you can see the green trim. I do that with a fine brush and then I give it two coats of paint and dry nice in between. And then this I just give one thick coat of paint and put it in front of the fan so that it will dry. You can go back over this with some glitter if you want and it would probably just completely disappear. Um, but I wasn't worried about that because I knew I'd be covering it up. The bulk of it would be covered. So I have this little berry pick. And you can get something like this at Dollar Tree or really anywhere off of any greenery. And another one of these pieces of greenery that I've just kind of cut down to look a little bit more like the shape of a tree. And I want this to go right on top of it. So I want it to look like almost like he's holding a little greenery bundle of his own. So I'm just going to put this right on top of it. And let that glue sit up. Careful, careful with your fingers. And this is how it looks. 
and we're going to add a little bit on the bottom of rope so that it looks nice and finished. Just a dot of hot glue to hold that on there while we wrap it around, cut off the rest, and then a little glue in the end so that it won't fall apart on you. And that'll hold that little bundle together. And I think that looks so much better for our little woodland gnome. What do you think? So here are his little hands finished. I just left the white piece so it would help cover up the where I tore it before. So you still see a little bit of it, but it I think it looks all right. Okay, and so we're going to add some glue on the back of that piece and place it down right in his little hands. Now he's got a beautiful piece of greenery. Our little lumberjack gnome. Do you like him? Are you going to do this? I hope so. Now you can just hang this up with a little piece of wire or something on the back. You could just hang it right off of the form actually. Yeah, why number three is the Joy Breadboard. All right, so I have some of my antiquing wax. I have another one of these little metal signs. This is a little breadboard that I thrifted and sanded just a touch. Just use my little foam sander. It is about a, looks like about a nine and a half by a maybe four and a half, four and a quarter, and then a little tiny wreath. This is the ribbon that I was thinking about using from the other project, and then a little bit of greenery. So I'm just going to use a wet wipe here. I'm going to get a little bit of that antiquing wax and place down on there. Going to rub it in just a bit, kind of blot it, and then start blotting that on to the sign. I want to make it look a little more aged because if you remember the snowflake in the beginning, it was aged. So I want to give it kind of a matching look, and you can do this by just kind of layering it on, and that's what I did. I had it a little bit lighter and then a little bit more until I got the look that I wanted. And then it's important to let that dry completely. You can see it's just a little bit of tarnish on there. While it is drying by the fan, I am going to fix up my wreath here. I want my wreath. This is just a little piece of, I think it was muscadine vine. I picked this out of the yard a couple of years ago. I made a large wreath and then I made a couple of little ones. And I'm just going to wrap a piece of that same pick that we've been using, working from that same piece, really stretching our dollar. I'm just going to use a little bit of floral wire. I'm trying to get next to the inside of it. I'm sorry that I'm a little out of frame. I was really focusing on what I was doing. And you're just going to wrap that around. Then I'm going to cut off some of these berries really carefully. I don't want any that look white because I'm not going to frost this. It's going to be, I want my red berries, deep red berries. So I'm only going to put them on the side where the greenery is. And I'm going to leave them in little bundles. And that's all we'll be putting on that little wreath. That's it. So I thought, okay, well, I could use this bow. And I even cut dovetails in it thinking that I might would use it. But I just, I don't know. I keep thinking about it, and, but I just can't do it. So I'm going to use this Dollar Tree ribbon. I'll tell you about this Dollar Tree ribbon. It's very pretty. It's nice, but it frays terribly when I you can see already the frays in the edges of it when I'm tying my bows it just comes apart it'll stay the bow will stay together but all of the edges just start fraying off so I had to go through there and pick those off trim that off of there uh, and I did trim my tails just a slant you just look at that look at that stuff all over the place you know it's a good thing I like rustic didn't bother me so much but you know I still had to work on it a little so one more little simple bow just like that to go on top trim trim then I'm going to glue down my joy it's all dry y'all know joy you know I love that word something we should strive for every single day and everything we do you gotta have joy happiness comes from within and it you know it's something that Nobody can give you. No. 
Okay, so then you place this down here, here, and wherever else you want to put it so that it will stay. And then press it down and hold it for a while so that it won't pop up. Because mine was not flat on the back. Then just decide where you want your little bow to be. And I just kind of tucked it behind there. And with a little bit of glue, that'll hold it in place. Now, I wanted a hanger in my breadboard, so I'm just going to take another piece of jute and just loop it over and then tie one knot and slide that knot close to the end. And then take the loop, press it through that hole, which I was happy to see that it actually fit, and then press the knot through the loop and pull it. And there you go. There it is. What do you think? Not bad, huh? I'm still not completely sure how I'm going to be doing my house this year. As far as rustic and farmhouse go, I know that I want to use a lot of red, white, beige, and green. But I'm not completely sure where I'm going to stop. There's so much, so many good things to make, and, and there's so much inspiration everywhere that I just am having a hard time deciding what I want to do. What are you doing in your house? You know, are you doing farmhouse or rustic or glam or modern? I'd love to know um, how other people are doing their trees and their homes this year. Will you be using any of the items that I have made in your house? Have you made anything so far that I've made? I'd love to see it. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. For the first project, we're going to start off with some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's got little red trucks with a black background, and this is in the Crafter Square section. I hope you can find this. It's so pretty. Some Rust-Oleum flat paint. It's white. I'm going to use a summer sign from Dollar Tree. I love the tag signs. And then I have some thrifted and some Walmart and I'm not sure where the other red ribbon came from. Then I'm just going to have some random picks that I might be using. And we're always going to start off by removing tags and hangers. Give this a good coat of spray paint. Only one coat. And then once it's dry, we're going to flip it over on our fabric and trim this down to fit. You want to leave it up on the side so that you can fold it over and hot glue it down. Be sure you protect your fingers. You might not get glue on them this way, but you can certainly feel the heat from the glue. You can easily flip your corners in like this to make them nice and neat. Or do it any way that you feel like you want to do it. And we're going to go all the way around. Just like that. And when you get to the top, it's just an easy fold over and a little bit of glue. And it's sealed in there. That sign is completely covered by that fabric. I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this extra stuff here to make it kind of flat in the back and use a piece of this uh, paper and cut it down and put it on the back. Now I'm going to take this Believe sign or word. Um, there, It comes in a three pack. And I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with that white one good coat is all it needed. And then decide what type of ribbons I want to use to make a really pretty bow to go on top. Oh yes, I remember now. This red ribbon was thrifted. I'm going to do about 18 inches, maybe a little bit over when you see me cutting here. Not exact. And I'm going to dovetail both sides of it. And I'll be doing the same process with each of the other ribbons, just cutting, I think I probably cut two of each. We'll see when I start counting. So this is what's called a funky bow. Very easy to make, and you're going to be happy with the results, I think. 
It's important that you choose a wired ribbon for these bows. You're going to go halfway down after you folded it over, kind of pinch it in the middle, and then you're going to squeeze it tightly in that joint between your thumb and your forefinger. Same way here, go about halfway down, pinch it toward the center tightly, and then squeeze it into your hand. Hold it in your hand. Same thing with the next piece, and I'm alternating pieces of ribbon, the different prints and designs, so that it will um, give us more variety of color in our bow. You're going to continue this process with the smaller ribbon there, that I think is a one inch piece of ribbon, you don't have to squeeze that in the center. It, you, it'll just go right into your hand easily. Okay, so you can see I've tried to keep the exact same colors away from each other just like that and kind of disperse these colors and patterns evenly now when I first put this in my hand I put it next to the other one but you see I don't like the look so I'm just gonna pull it out and move it to the other side and so far I like the way this looks I love all the different patterns and textures so far now we have like a little bouquet you can use a twist tie, you can use a piece of um, pipe cleaner, but I like to use my zip ties, especially for this particular bow. It's really thick where I'm holding it. It's very bulky right there. I did not take my hand off of that bow at all. I just used my other hand to wrap it around and then just pull that zip tie tight. Go ahead and cut the end off and then you can start fluffing that out. We're going to pull them away from the center and downward like petals on a flower away and down, away and down, just like that. Opening up your loops. And then here I need to adjust just a little. So I pull down just a little bit. If you get your zip tie on really tight, you won't be able to move it at all. I was surprised I could move it because that thing is on there tight. Flip it over and then start pulling these apart. And you want to do the same thing with the tails that you did with the loops above separate the patterns, flip over those patterns to make sure they're all the pretty sides or down for now so that when you flip it over they will be up. Just like that. Now just pull those pieces back out like you had them. Very easy to do and that's why it's important that you use a wired ribbon uh, otherwise everything's just going to be kind of flat. It's going to lay flat. We want a nice poofy bow. Isn't she pretty? Okay. Now, I'm going to put that Believe word back on there, and I thought maybe I would use a little bit of ribbon to help it stand out. Looks good like that, but I like to layer, so I'm going to put a little bit of this green over the last piece of that ribbon, just that scrap of ribbon I had left. I'm just going to trim the green down a little bit, make it look a little bit neater, and then protect my fingers and put a good bit of glue under the ribbon. Now it's going to press up through that ribbon on the bottom and catch the ribbon on the top. So it's all glued nicely down. Now I'm going to use some of this E6000. When it gets clogged, just run a little piece of wire down there and you can get it to work again. I'm going to squeeze a little bit here and there on the back of this Believe sign so it won't pop off. You know how metal is with hot glue. And then very quickly and carefully add some hot glue kind of eyeball where it ought to be and then press it down. And now we're going to add a good bit of glue in the center of that bow on the bottom and flip it over on the top. Wherever you want to put it, mine's closer to the corner, to the left corner there. Now do you feel like you can do this bow? I think you can. We're going to add just a little bit of greenery. This is a thrifted pick that came from Dollar Tree and I well, no, Walmart. And I'll be using this pick a few times in this video. This greenery, rather. But you can get anything you want from the Dollar Tree. Anything you like. I like this one. It has a little bit of frosting on it. Just a little bit of frost. Tiny bit of glitter. And then I'm just going to tuck it in on that side. And then I like the placement of it here on the other side going downward. So I'm going to place it there. And this is what that tag sign will look like. You can use it as a leaner on your cabinet if you would like, or you can put a little hanger on the top. You can use whatever type hanger you want, but because this is a 
piece that is kind of out of balance, meaning that if you put it right in the center, it's going to lean to the side because of the heavy bow. You might want to use something like this so that you can slide it back and forth on the nail till you get it hung exactly as it should be. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Project number two. We're going to use some of these thrifted Merry Christmas ornaments. We're only going to use one, and I think it's a four-pack. Just like that. Very glittery. I'm going to use another scrap of that same piece of fabric, and we're going to use one of these Dollar Tree ornament signs. I'm going to start by removing the, the hangers and the tags like we always do, and then I'm carefully going to pull this metal piece up. It's thin, so you don't want to break it and then I'm just pulling off the hot glue off the back just to clean it up so it'll lay nice and flat when we put it back down. I'm going to trim off enough here and Mod Podge it down. This is a satin finish, but you can use whatever kind you like. It's all going to stick it down just like this one will. Going to get good coverage all over where the fabric's going to touch. Hey, if you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Check out the link in the description box below. Find your space and press it down. Thank you for the coffee, Denise. Okay. Press it down from the center outward so you don't have any wrinkles or bubbles in there. And you could always iron your fabric if you would like to first, but um, I'm not like that. I just, I'm not going to do it. I know I can do it with my hands and save a little time. Okay. Now, I'm going to add my fabric, my Mod Podge on top of my fabric, rather all over all the way to the sides you can even see the edges through there thick coat and i'm going to put it to dry overnight i'm going to cut off the little hanger pieces here and remove the ribbon and just make it look more like it's not an ornament you know make it look like it is intended to be wording for a sign you could probably cut this thin plastic off with a pair of scissors if you'd like and i'm going to use some mod podge sealer to seal in my glitter a little bit Take it outside where it's ventilated and do that. Spray it down good one coat. Okay, now once this is dry and this is the next day, I'm gonna come in with my utility knife, flip this over and trim with that blade right next to the sign. And it is going to cut, be careful, keep your hands out of the way. It's gonna cut a nice clean edge. Look at that, gorgeous. That Mod Podge, that overlap made a nice edge like a piece of paper would be. So it's very easy to cut like you would cut paper. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I'm gonna sand my edges just a tad and I'm just using a, a foam block, sanding block for that. Down and away, down and away until it is finished. Now, I've chosen some of this thrifted ribbon and it's actually some type of a trim, I think, but it's sort of velvety and shiny. We're gonna use it to trim out the word in just a moment. Now we're going to use a little bit more of this E6000 on this metal piece and a little hot glue. Quickly moving around here, flipping it over, and then we're going to use some clamps to hold it down. These little clamps have been a lifesaver to me. They came from Crafter Square in the Dollar Tree. Add on your hot glue here. That's all you really need for this plastic piece. Just some hot glue. And then try to get it centered you will notice in the end product that mine is not exactly centered, but, you know, it's okay. I don't mind. Dollar Tree can't even get it exactly centered, so I'm not going to be too harsh on myself. Now, I thought it would be cute to just have my word overhanging the little ribbon trim a little bit, so I did it like that and just kind of wiggled it under there, and I'm going to use some hot glue on the back side to glue it down. I'm going to put it under there, and then try to get it close to the same measurement on the other side and then glue it down on the back side as well easy to do now we'll take off my little clamps once it is dry and this is what it looks like what do you think not bad huh all right on to project number three we're going to use some of this rust-oleum paint we're going to use another pick my E6000 again, a little hot glue, 
this cute little tray that I got from Dollar Tree with the truck on it. And then I have some ribbon from the thrift store. This plaid. It's not the same as the check that's on the truck, but that doesn't matter. It's okay. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon and then some more Dollar Tree ribbon. Cute. I used this in another project for fall and I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to cut off this hanger because we will not use it in this and then take this wheel out and spray paint it. The front one time and the back one time. While that is drying, we're going to go ahead and fix our little a way, we need a way to attach this to the wreath. So we're going to do it with these pipe cleaners. I'm using a little bit of E6000 along with some hot glue because like we said before, hot glue is going to pop off of metal a lot of times. So just be sure that you're keeping that in mind when you do your projects because it's very frustrating to get done and then have things falling apart. So I'm going to put a clamp on here to hold it because I want to be sure that my E6000 is sticking down like it should. And Dollar Tree has a, um, a comparable adhesive that you can use if you would rather use that. If that's what you have, you can use that. And then I'm going to clamp it down until it is dry. I gave that a day to dry. And my wheel is now dry. And I'm going to just lay this down and figure out kind of where I want it to be. And flip it over and just wrap around those spokes for the wheel. And I'll tell you this, and you're going to notice this later when I'm putting the greenery on. This thing will break easily. Now I'm surprised I didn't break it with the first one that I did, but this time I actually do break it and I fix it. So be sure you're paying attention because you want to be sure. I don't want anybody to give up on their project just because they have a bump in the road. You can fix little errors like that. So I know that I want these to wrap around like this and they're going to be connected with this piece of um, this floor wire. And you'll see here, see how it's broken? How that little spoke is apart from there? I just slid it down, that piece of greenery started to wrap and then when I wrap the greenery down and get it somewhat secure, I'm going to wrap around right there to catch that spoke and then wrap it back and forth and back and forth to hold that spoke right there in place. And then you can secure it with a little bit of hot glue and it won't come apart. See, that was easy to fix, wasn't it? Now I'm gonna overlap these and with any additional wire I have, I'll just use that and I'll add more wire when needed and then just continue to wrap just like this. Now the greenery that I'm using is good greenery it's from Walmart, but it is a good, it's a very good quality. The feel of it, it just feels like it's good quality. It does have some gaps where I have wrapped it and it's kind of flattened out where I've wrapped it. So that's not a problem either. We're just gonna pull another one of those picks apart and then overlap those pieces, just like that. And these are the pieces that just pop, the plastic pieces, they pop right off the wire. You just pull them sometimes when you're arranging, they fall off. It's that easy to do. So you're just going to use those and add those along the way in any spots that look bare or that need a little more fullness. And then one more piece, I thought maybe one above the truck would look nice and it is going in the opposite direction and I did intend for it to go that way. Um, if that bothers you, you can certainly do yours, you know, in another direction or cover the entire wreath if you like. Now I just use that stem to wrap around the wheel and then I'm using my wires to wrap that around there as well. Then just a little bit more on the top and holds it in place. And then like I said, go ahead and go back and put more on where you feel like you need to put more on. Alright, so so far so good. Now we want to add a bow and I'll tell you this bow is very easy to make. You're just going to fold it over on itself several times and I end up with this pattern of ribbon. I have three loops on one side and two loops on the other side. I just miscounted. It happens sometimes, but you know you go with it, right? We work with it. Then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon and do the same thing. Just fold it over and over and over until I have at least 
two loops on one side and two loops on the other side. Or folds, depends on how you look at it. I'm going to cut a piece of this ribbon right here, and it's just going to be used to attach it together to the frame. All right, this is going to look like a little bow tie. See there? Squeeze it up, pinch it up, and then decide if you want the pattern of the solid color on top. I'm going to put my pattern on top like that, and then I'll be using a zip tie to close it off. You can use whatever you would like to do this to, you know, hold your bow together, whatever you like. And then once I have that bow secured, I'm just folding it in half and sliding that down before I tighten it all the way. Make sure it's even in the middle. I can start fluffing this out. And of course, once I start fluffing it out, that's when I realize, hey, I have extra loops that I didn't think I had. So, happy mistakes? Yes. And I'm just going to pull them all apart. You know how to fluff a bow? That's what we're going to do. We're going to fluff them all out. Uh, I think I ended up with five loops on the bottom, too. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to wrap around the center and then secure it to the frame right in that open spot. Flip it over and tie it in a few knots. So easy to do. And now we're going to work on the tails. This is about 18 inches here. I'm just going to fold this over and dovetail it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the red plaid. Then I'm going to stack the red plaid on top, pinch it together, place it down in the center of that piece of ribbon that tied it to the frame, and I'm just going to tie that in a few knots. And that's what's going to be our tails. And because we use wired ribbon, it's going to stand up and stand out and look very pretty for us. So I'm going to pull these tails through the frame. You can curl these with your fingers. You can tuck them around and under floral. I've, I've tucked that plaid one there. You see behind the truck, I just pressed it down behind there. And then this red, I don't know, is this metallic? A metallic ribbon. I'm looking to see the right side of it. And there we go. I just flipped it over. Very easy. And then I'm just going to feed it through the wire here. And do the same thing on a different spoke with that plaid. Isn't that cute? I like the way that looks. But you can do yours any way you like. Now I'm going to use a little mini ornament from, I think it originally came from Walmart, one of my viewers told me. And put that there. It's going to be on our door. Then I'm going to trim down this ribbon. And we're going to make a little bitty bow. I've seen people make these bows before, like on a fork. And they're really cute, like a real tiny bow. But I'm just going to do mine like the breast cancer awareness um, tie. I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to tie that extra piece that we cut off right around the center. Just like that. A couple of knots to make sure it doesn't slip out. Then I'm going to flatten it with my fingers a little bit and decide how short I want the tails to be. Trim them down a bit. Now we're going to glue down that little mini ornament. I'm just wiping that glitter off of there. Press it down and then you can certainly use your E6000 there too. And then put my little bow right over the hole. And I decided that I still wanted to use a little bit of this ribbon. So I'm going to make, you can make a ribbon like that, a bow like that, or you can flip it around like I did the other ones. Flip it around a few times, and we're going to have four loops when this bow is done. Easy. We're going to use a piece of jute. We're going to fold it in half, find our center, tie it off, and then we can tie it on top of the other bow. Really, really really easy to do. We didn't even have to notch these bows. Alright, so again, pull those loops out. You can trim the tails that are on the inside because we don't have intentional tails in here, so you can cut those off, make them a little shorter, just like I'm doing, so that they don't get in the way. And we can 
plop that little, looks like a four leaf clover, right in the middle, wrap it around, and just tie that jute where it is at. Now that thing should be very secure in there. But like I said, feel free to use a little bit of hot glue if you need to, to make sure that it doesn't move around. Mine is staying there fine. And I think that that extra ribbon really did the trick. It really brightened up that top part and I like it a lot. So now we need a hanger. We're gonna flip it over and use another little piece of pipe cleaner. I ran out of white, so that's why I'm using the brown. And just wrap it, twist it around there. And then move over just a little bit on the other side of that spoke and go ahead and wrap it again. And now you have a little hanger and it is hidden behind the greenery. Go ahead and trim off any extra wire that you have back there just to keep it from scratching up your wall or your door, wherever you're gonna put it. And there you go. Now on to the next one. This is number four. We're gonna make a little miniature red truck ornament. This came from Dollar Tree. It sure did. Here's some more of that Walmart ribbon that I showed you. I have some scrap ribbons, just a bunch from the thrift store. I have another mini ornament. Some of these little bottle brush trees probably came from Dollar Tree. Here's some mini ones that are dark green and then I have a couple of little pieces of randomness and a little piece of foam, a little scrap. We're going to cut down the foam so that it will fit inside of that truck. It's hollow in there all the way up to the front. Measure it out, cut it up, glue it down. Okay, now we're gonna work on this little ornament, cutting off the hanger. I do end up putting in some um, spackling into that hole to fill it up, but I'm measuring now to see how tall I want my little sign to be and using just a little scrap of wire here that I have. It's kind of like a florist wire. I would love to have you subscribe to this channel if you have not already. We do lots of budget-friendly DIYs, and we try to do things that are unique and that bring us joy. Okay, so we're going to start just pressing those down into the back of that truck. These already, they had plastic stands originally, but I removed those for a project I did last year. We're going to make this tree look a little bit shorter by just going up about half an inch, cutting it off, pulling off the little extra little pieces there and getting down to the wire, and then we're gonna stick that down into the foam too. So, so far we have two trees back there. I'm gonna use a little bit of this apple barrel white paint and a little brush that also came from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put this on these green trees just to give it a frosted look because the other trees are snowy looking, so we want them to kind of match. Like they've all come from the same place, right? They're in the back of that truck. They all took the same trip from the tree farm. There you go. And then you gotta be sure to let those dry. See the difference? Be sure those are dry before you handle them. It doesn't take long. I dry my things in front of a fan. Cut the bottoms off of these. Then you have a wire just like the other little trees. And you can place those down wherever you like. I'm gonna place mine around the other trees. There we go, so far so good. They're looking better. We can put that sign in now. I think it looks great for that. Okay, so here's a bow. You've already seen how we made the other ones. I did this one the same way. Cute little bow. And then I'm gonna put a dot of glue on the top of the sign and just put that right up there. Pretty, pretty. Simple, 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 little bitty, perfect for a tiered tray if you have a tall tiered tray. Just gorgeous. Okay, so there are a couple of things you can do with this now. You can leave it like this, or you can continue to add, and I'm gonna do this in layers so that you can choose how far you wanna go with your little truck. I've just folded this over, made one little loop in the middle, and then two tails. I'm using a little piece of floral wire to twist around the center. I'm gonna do this tightly and then take the excess off the, off the end so we're not poking our fingers. We're gonna flare out the tails. Now, I saw this on a larger scale um, by Kathy of my DIY, and uh, so I'm gonna use it here in my little arrangement. 
just going to use another piece of that pick, hot glue right in the center of it, and then let it dry. And then we can use these as picks. And they look like, you know, just a little extra decoration in there. I decided that I would like mine to be dovetailed, so I went ahead and did that to the ends, placed it back in there. And I want them to look the same, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. You can use pre-made bows, anything you want to to use to embellish yours. Or you could use an entire bow, like the one I put on the sign, rather than using these little pick pieces. Whatever brings you joy. So since I have one on the back, I'm going to move one kind of diagonally from it up on the other side. Just like that. So here we have it so far, like this. I think that's cute. But we can keep going. I went ahead and used those little scraps of green picks I had. I put a little white paint on there and we're gonna add some snowmen. These are mini ornaments that I got at the thrift store. And this truck has a little, like a dent in the top of it that was already there. It was made like that. I don't know if it was an error or not, but it's the perfect place for me to set a little snowman. So I'm just gonna put some hot glue there and set my chosen snowman right down in it. There you go. He looks happy up there, doesn't he? It looks like somebody has taken their their little truckload of trees to town and they're ready to sell them. And maybe they're sitting there with their hot chocolate or their coffee and they're, they've made a little snowman to keep them company while they wait. Okay, so if you wanna add to the front of this truck a little wreath, you can do it with pipe cleaners. You know how to do that, very easy, which is what I've done here. And you can add a bow on top. You will see after I do that, that I decided I did not want the red and white on the front. I felt like it was too much with the bow pattern that I have here. So this is what it would look like if you chose to leave it this way. Cute, cute, no problem. Or you can take a piece, a little scrap piece that you have and be very, very, very careful. You have to hold this a long time now because it's gonna try to flex apart. This has no wire in it, it's just the plastic. But once it is dried and cool, you can go ahead and put it on your truck. And that's where I'm putting it. Now you can see the glue, but you won't be able to once I get done. And I like this one better. See, the bow's gonna go right on top of that. And I was praying for it not to pop back open once I put that hot glue on there. And it didn't, yay! Okay, precious, oh my goodness, I'm having too much fun. So, while I'm still in the zone, I'm gonna take some more of that white paint and just put that as a, I don't know, a little sprinkle of snow right there on the front of the truck. But now, we have to put snow on our truck, right? No snowman is going to be there with no snow. So, now I'm just going to put some snow on this truck. All around the little snowman, on the hood of the truck, and all the places that snow would naturally fall and catch on your vehicle. So, I'm kind of going above the hubs. I'm going to go above the tires, on the high points of the door. Places like that, just to give it a little bit extra. And I was scared to death to go too heavy handed, so I just did it a little at a time. But you can see there, I just took my finger and wiped away what I didn't like, and that was fine, and it did fine like that. My little, I had a camper trailer to go on the back, but it didn't fit right, so I just left it off. But this is what it looks like, isn't it cute? Oh my goodness, this is so cute. This may be my favorite one of these projects. But I really like them all. What do you think? Okay, so the last one, pretty easy. We're going to take one of these box bags from Dollar Tree. One side is kind of shiny and the other side is flat. And I decided that for my purposes, I'll use the flat side. This came off of a thrifted sign. And then I have some Jenga blocks. Also some paint stir sticks. Plus, I have this wood tint. It is a gray color, and this is a home decor, um, kind of a stain, and it came from uh, plaid. So I'm going to protect my surface. I'm just using my cutting mat here and an old brush, a little chippy brush, and I'm just going to start laying on this stain. It's a stain, not a paint, but it doesn't have a funky smell. Um, yeah, I'm real sensitive to that kind of thing. It didn't make me cough. It didn't make me wheeze. It was great. 
I'm going over the bar here, all of the little beads, which are so easy to paint because they're on that string. Just like that. And then after a little while, I went ahead and wiped this off. And the longer you leave it, the darker it's going to be. And you can layer it to make it even darker. When it dries, it is darker. But just to show you a difference, you can see the gray in there. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it looks really good. We're going to do the same over here with drying those beads really well. And then look how easy the cleanup is. So easy. That's a dry paper towel. And then all you have to do is use a, a damp towel and wipe it up. I'm gonna start cutting this box. You can use a cutter, but I thought my scissors might work a little better. And I felt a little more comfortable and confident that I wouldn't cut myself doing it this way. You're just gonna go ahead and be sure you don't cut too close in on the picture that you're gonna use. So the side you're using, rather. Go ahead and use your, your trimmer or your whatever you wanna use to cut and try to get that edge as straight as you possibly can. Don't worry um, if you didn't get your lines exactly straight because stuff's going to be covered. You see this is paper on top of this cardboard. It's going to peel away a little bit, or it did on me anyway. You can use a glue stick and just press that right back down. You'll never even know. Just press it down. You can use a tool to push it down. It'll be great. I had a little tear here when I was cutting. Totally fix that too. I'm going to take some jute to just kind of trim out that side. You can see it's kind of raggedy looking. I'm gonna carefully, carefully, and very slowly, put a line of glue down this side and then just let it overlap on the ends so I don't get it too short and go all the way down. I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. I'm gonna go all the way down on both sides the same way to secure it. And then now we're gonna take our paint sticks, which are dry now. We're gonna mark where we want them to be cut. And then I'm gonna easily score this with that same blade that I used to trim up everything else. I'm just scoring that wood, making some little tracks in there, and then do it on the edges too, flip it over on the back, do it on the other edge, same thing. And then you can snap it in half, just like that, perfect. Take a little bit of sanded paper and you just start rubbing that down and kind of, I kind of rocked it back and forth so I would have a little bit of a curve on the edges like it is on the other end. And there they are finished. So this is gonna be the top and the bottom. A little bit of hot glue, we're gonna put the bottom on and I'm just trying to center it, get it as far down as I can so we can really see the sign without covering too much up. And I think that gray looks really good with the background. What do you think? We're gonna do the same thing with the top. And then go across here. Very hot glue. Love my glue gun. Okay, so you're just gonna press that down and know my fingers are not touching the glue. And then you're gonna let it dry because it'll stick on everything if you don't. And then here it is when it is finished. I love you and I appreciate you and thank you for understanding why my baby was sick and getting better. She is all better now, I'm happy to report. Just a little cough left, but otherwise she is doing great. Here is a recap of the things we've done. Now, some of these things are in other videos. If you're interested and you wanna know, um, be sure you check out links that are in the description box. You can see here our truck, our little hanging sign. Here's our tag sign. So pretty. I love that fabric. I can't believe I got that at the Dollar Tree, y'all. The Dollar Tree. And then look how great the wreath turned out. So pretty. And then we'll have our ornament sign in there too. This is in a different video, that little truck gift. And there we go. So those are all five of them. Which one did you like the best? Which one are you going to try to make? I want to say again, thank you, thank you to all of my subscribers. A huge welcome to everybody who is new and is just coming over to my channel. I appreciate you so much. I'm always glad to see the comments. I'm always grateful for shares and likes and all the love that you give me. I'm going to try to share that with you as well. 
Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. All right, the first is going to be a rustic curly wreath. We're going to start off with some of these pipe cleaners. Use whatever color you like. I'm going to use some of this decorative mesh that came from Dollar Tree. It will take me four and a half rolls. And this is a 14 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. You can see that it is broken down into sections and that is going to be important in a moment. All right, we're gonna start rolling this off and cutting it out in 12 inch pieces. We're going to make bundles of three and we are going to need 18 bundles of three. So you're gonna just roll it under here. The tighter you roll it, the smaller your curls are going to be. I like mine to be about the diameter of a nickel when you look at the end of it, but do whatever it is that you like. And we're going to just stack those together. One more, you can see what I'm doing here, and stack it. If you have a bunch of clamps or those little clothes pins, those work really well to hold your little pieces together. We're going to take a coordinating ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree. And then I have two more that came from the thrift store. We're going to have nine of each one of these. So nine of the plaid, nine of the one with the holly, and nine of the little, the thinner brown ribbon here, or beige ribbon. All of these are wired, and you do want to use wired ribbon for this. To give it a finished look, you want to fold those over and cut a little line up to make V's. These are called dovetails. This gives a very nice look, just like that. We're going to take pipe cleaners, and I did switch to the red and white. You're going to need 18 of those. This is how we're going to attach our little bundles down to the wire wreath. I'm going to use a zip, I'm going to use a tie here, put it around, twist it so that it stays on the wreath, just like this. We're going to use three in each section, and you can see those dividers. And you're just going to use three on each one. You can see they're about evenly spaced, just like this. Okay, so now we're going to start placing down those bundles. You're going to grab that bundle, take your clamp off of it, and the side that has the little the edge that sometimes comes unraveled with the Dollar Tree mesh, place that downward against the wreath so that you won't notice and all of your pretty sides will be up. Just like this. Put your next one down, press it down into there, hold it tightly and twist it. So there's two bundles. You can just push those little twists out of the way if you'd like. and then continue all the way around your wreath. Then you can fluff out a little bit, make sure everything is where it should be, and look how full that is. If you prefer, you can make it even more full by doing four bundles of four instead of three. All right, so we're gonna start with our little stacks of ribbon. They're all nicely dovetailed and ready to go. You're gonna open one of your little pieces down here, and you're gonna twist this in, just like this. One or two twists, you don't need a whole lot to hold it in place. And then you're just going to bend and fold these out. This is part of the fluffing process. It makes everything nice and neat. Don't worry about the wires not being the right color. Don't worry about the that sort of thing. We're going to take care of that shortly. I'm going to show you again. Take that stack, kind of pinch it together in the middle. Fix the ribbons how you want them. And then we're going to skip. So we're going to go to the third one. So we had one, we skipped one, and now we're in the next one. So there are 18 bundles on your wreath, and you are going to use nine of the little ribbon stacks in the wreath, every other pipe cleaner. Just like that. Here we go again. We're going to stack them together. Skip one and go to that one. Now we're going to go all the way around just like that. This is easy enough to do, right? And it makes such a pretty presentation. All of these little tails sticking out, so pretty. 
If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, so we want to make everything look pretty. And now we have all these leftover pipe cleaners. So what are we going to do with those leftover pipe cleaners? If you're not going to add anything else to it and you're finished, you're going to take it to the back and twist it around and or cut it off. If you want to show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Just look in the description box below. And thank you very much to Ms. Brenda Holmes for buying me my coffee. Okay. Press through your wreath form here and just twist it. And then you can just lay it down like that or cut it off. So when you're all done, this is what you're left with and you can't even see those anymore, right? Fluff everything out, touch every little piece of that ribbon, put it in the right place, make sure none of your wreath form is showing underneath and that none of your hardware shows. You don't want any of your little ties showing underneath there. And you can fluff them up so that they won't be seen and it looks more high end that way. And this is how it looks so far. Really pretty and actually pretty enough on its own. You wouldn't have to add anything, but you could put a sign there if you wanted to, maybe in the middle. We're gonna add a big, pretty bow. I'm gonna use this bow, make, bow making tool that I made for myself. I'll link that video for you. And you're just gonna measure off long tails and we're gonna have varying tails on the different bows. This is gonna be a stacked bow, really easy bow to make. Um, you're just gonna keep repeating the same process over and over again with the bows getting a little bit smaller as you get toward the top. So we're gonna take this ribbon Put it on the bottom and make sure that we have a nice big loop to start with and pull our tails down and out of the way i'm going to fold it over push my two wires together and slide it down in there and just like that that's just the way i do it you don't have to put your wired pieces together you can just shove the whole thing in there if you want but this is how i do it makes more sense to me we're gonna do a good long tail on this one too. So we're gonna place it down in there. I'm going to twist it so that I have the shiny side up. Pinch my wires together and slide it right through that slot. And I want this bow to be about a half an inch shorter than the bow that is underneath it. I'm gonna twist it just like that. Hold it down. The bow makers that you can buy already made have a little spool on the end like a little extra knob down there that you can put your ribbon spool on which makes it very convenient that you don't have your ribbon just running amok on your table. Um, I didn't add that onto mine and I kind of wish I would have but you know that's that's for another video. Anyway we're going to continue along stacking this bow each little layer with each little parts of the loops being a little smaller than the one that is underneath it. So it's just like steps. The bottom's going to be the longest and then a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter as we go up and stack up on our bow. Just like this. I was down to the end of this ribbon so I had to pull on it a little bit and kind of adjust it so I had some even tails. Keep going here. That's my struggle to see which side is which. Alright, so now we already have our zip tie underneath so that makes it easy for us to wrap around it and zip it off. You can use floor wire for this, you can use another pipe cleaner if you want to use it. I should have put a piece of wire under there between the zip tie and the bow in the back so that we would have something to attach to the wreath, but I do something else instead and you can choose which way you want to do it. So before I get it completely tight, I'm making sure that my little loops are even and then I can tighten up that zip tie. Finish off your ends with dovetails. This is going to make them look very nice. Here is my piece that I'm going to use to hang it to the wreath and I'm just going to use a piece of jute. Wrap it around the back and give it a couple of knots and cut off that extra piece there. We don't need that. Just like that. And then here's our wreath. 
We can go ahead and choose what we want the top to be. It all looks the same. And then we're going to wrap it around back and tie it. If you're going to give this to anybody, be sure that you really cover up your little uh, wires and things in the back. But this is just for me and it won't be on a glass door, so it won't be a problem. Alright, and here I am just fluffing those loops up and out and you know we want it to look nice we don't want it to look like we just pulled it out of the box of our decorations from last year I want to give you a couple of options now for what you can do with your bow I've got these all pulled out here and they are kind of looped and hanging over the sides and they look really gorgeous you could leave them just like this long if you would like or you could trim them up if you would like or you can curl them like I did we're going to use a spool that our deco mesh came off of because I save everything and you can really tell if you look in my craft room watch my lighting video if you want to see what my craft room looks like because I show it without cleaning it mm-hmm yeah all my secrets are out now just gonna curl it wrap it around doesn't matter which direction you do you see I switched it up last minute doesn't matter just as like we're curling someone's hair you're gonna make these little curly cues all over do some to the left some to the right pull them down if they get squished they have wire you can just roll it back out it's not permanent but it'll last as long as you leave it alone mine is hanging up in my staging area and it's still gorgeous no problem at all just going to continue around like this I want you to see all this so that you get the idea that everything needs to be touched everything needs to be manipulated we really want this to look high-end and you can see the difference when you're done with your projects I don't want somebody to come in my house and say look what you crafted no no if they don't know that I'm a crafter I just want them to look at it and, and assume that I got it from a high-end store somewhere maybe at Kirkland's or you know something like that dare I say pottery barn hmm I don't know would you consider this rustic because I do I do because of the colors and because of the print of the holly on that ribbon I think it looks woody or woodsy so I think that it fits and I think the colors fit too for rustic and it certainly will fit in my home so look how pretty this is look at those curls love it and the best thing is you don't have to use hairspray how about that save that for the glitter that is the biggest bow I have ever done in my life look at that I just going around playing with the ribbon to make sure I have a variety on both sides number two is our rustic pine wheelbarrow you're gonna need some foam floral foam and some type of a container I have a wheelbarrow but you can use a truck or you can use a wagon whatever you want to use this is wood and it's gorgeous these are some picks that came from Goodwill this is a little sign that came from Goodwill these are my scraps of ribbon that I had left over and then this is a pick that I already had it's just a little it, it could even be a piece of incense I don't know what it is I get so much stuff I don't know all right I'm gonna use some hot glue and just put this down in the base because I don't want my pine branches to fall out I don't want to just lay them in we want it to look like we've been in the woods and we're getting ready to decorate our porch so here we go we're going to take this longest piece put it on the bottom now they are originally all the same length but we are going to adjust that okay got the first one in we're going to cut this one about an inch up and it's going to go on top and at an angle right here okay and then the last one of the third piece I'm just gonna bend a little bit and about an inch and a half up we're gonna cut that one and clip that off give it a little bend and put that right in the front of that foam and it goes in kind of at an angle remember that pine branches are basically straight so make sure that when you're fluffing your pine you get it straight be sure that you're covering up your foam so that you get a nice look you can use excelsior grass you can use moss you can use paper shreds whatever it is that you have I don't want anything showing underneath so I'll make this nice and neat 
and do the best I can with what I've got. And this is some I already had from another project. Okay, so that looks nice, right? All right. Now, we want to put this sign in there. It's so good to be home. We're going to put a little hot glue there and the pick on it. And then please use white. I just used this because it's the only thing I had in my reach right now. So that's what I use. But you want to use white so that it looks nice from both sides. We're going to use scraps of ribbon. And I'm using the smallest piece of ribbon I had left of that plaid there or that checked piece. And I'm just measuring everything against that so that I can use the piece. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of the beige and I'm going to use a couple of pieces of my holly ribbon. Okay, so we're just going to dovetail, same thing as before, and I'm just showing you that you can do more than one layer at a time if you would like to save a little time. For this messy bow, you're just going to start putting down your layers. Just like this. And put your next layer on and then one on top. I'm going to cut a little piece of this jute so that I can accordion this or walk those thumbs together like this. Wrap that jute around it, lay it down, and give it a few knots. You want to be sure you tie your knot really tight because you're going to need to fluff and manipulate this bow quite a bit. Okay. So you just pull apart your little layers, pull them down and pull them up, and out. You separate them, and they'll look nice like this. So we're going to put our sign down in our container. When we were little, we called them wheelbarrows, not burrows, wheelbarrows. Go get the wheelbarrow, and we'd ride around and push each other in them. But that's not what this is. It's a, wheel, it's a wheelbarrow. Okay, because I know somebody will correct that if I say it wrong. We're going to tie this on here, just like so. And it is a little crooked, but a little hot glue will fix that. And you can put it exactly where you want it, and then make sure that everything looks beautiful on your little boat. Nice. I like this. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Number three is our rustic nativity. All right, so I got a stack of these from Goodwill, and I'm just gonna be using one of these as our background today. It is five and a half inches, you use what you have. I've got a couple of stars to choose from and this 3D kit. I've chosen to use the nativity, but you can certainly use the snowman or the woods if this is not something that interests you. This is a cherry paint marker or a furniture repair marker and a little bit of spray paint. This is in like a black, almost black. So I'm gonna spray paint the ornament part and put it out to dry, and then we're gonna use this furniture repair marker to stain our gorgeous little nativity. I'm gonna go all around in this darker color, and then when we get to baby Jesus, we're gonna do something just a little bit different for him. So we got the wise men and Joseph, and the bottom of this manger is going to be the dark color. And then I'm going to choose the oak marker, which is a little bit lighter, and put it on the top part. And that's where little baby Jesus is asleep. So, you can use brown paint if you don't have a furniture marker. I'm just showing you. Be sure you color in all your little white spots so that nothing shows. We're going to take a star, whichever star you choose, if it is a galvanized star. And mine came off of a 4th of July sign from Dollar Tree, so... I'm reusing that. Just take a little bit of the antique wax and to keep it in the rustic theme, we're just gonna dull it down a little bit and give it a little bit of age. Simple enough. It took very little of that stain to make that work. And you're gonna let it dry. So here are our pieces all ready to be worked with. I'm gonna take my sanding block and those come from Dollar Tree. They're really, really good. I do recommend them. They're in two different grits or two different grains. Just like that, now we have our little edges knocked off. Gives it a little more of a rustic look. I have some E6000, and the container is like a little jewelry container, but I believe it's made of the same thing. It works the same way, but it has a tiny little hole, so it's really easy to work with on small projects like this. I'm going to use a little hot glue for a quick hold until the other glue has a chance to set up. And I'm going to press it down. 
get it in the right spot and then give it a chance to set up and once the glue is dry carefully slide the pieces in I know I want the manger to be in the background and then I'm gonna put the wise man in there then I'll add in Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus and then they're not glued in so they can easily be moved around but they do f stay in place fairly well at least on the particular one I have now we're gonna add our star a little hot glue will work for this but you can certainly use a little bit of E6000 or whatever type of adhesive that you want to use that works for you and then put that down right on top of where the other star was on the manger alright so if you just like simple modern this might be the thing for you and you might be complete but I want to add a little bit more so I'm just taking some of this ribbon that I got I believe either from Walmart or Dollar General last year on clearance and we're just gonna place that down kind of as a little border or edge covering you know where that wood was showing the layers were showing and then I'm gonna wrap it around and neatly trim it and glue it down to hang this to make it a large Christmas tree ornament or I guess medium medium large large for my tree we'll put it that way we're gonna make a little bow on here and a hanger so the first part we're gonna do is the bow and it's just we're looping it over so that we have two pieces on one end two pieces on the other end just like this Again, trim it off then we're gonna cut another little piece and we're gonna use it to tie around the middle to make the tails you can do a shoestring bow, shoelace bow, whatever you call it, any way that you want to do it. You can just flip those around and fluff the little ears out, and you'll have two loops on each side. Some jute would be really pretty here also, if you like. A little bit of hot glue is going to hold this in place right underneath the little shelf. And then we need to trim up the tails. And if you need to glue your little bow down you can certainly do that on the little loopy part so to make a tie or a hanger we're going to just take another piece of that ribbon tie one knot in the end and then you can just easily put that on the back with a little bit of hot glue right behind where the top of the ornament would be look just like that and that's how that would look so I want to show you these backdrops. This is called La Forest Backdrop. They got in touch with me and asked me did I want to try out some of their items and show them in a video. And these are great. Um, it looks like it is not in focus, but it's the way it is supposed to look. I want to show you how it looks laying here. They come very neatly packaged. And then I used a little bit of steam to iron it out because it does have some creases in it from the folds. You can see that. And then, it, there it is hanging in the background. Is that not gorgeous? I love that. I love it. I could not wait for these to come in. That looks just like a piece of my house. It looks so realistic. Here are the pieces. On my lovely little newly made up Christmas backdrop for you guys. Is our little greenery piece down below. And then here we have that beautiful curly wreath. Which of these is your favorite? And which one do you think that you will be trying? I'd love to know. I hope you've enjoyed these as much as I have. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. First one is going to be a Merry Christmas sign. I'm going to use some of this home decor stain this is like a wood tint and it's in gray it's from folk art a little chippy brush here this I got from the thrift store it is a paper banner and it happens to fit this sign that I got from Dollar Tree perfect you'll still be able to see the hole but I can fix that a little bit so here is this one. They make them in, um, I think they have some Christmas ones too, but I like the one that is just kind of, doesn't have any paint on it. We're going to fix it though. So I had some little creases. I'm just fixing my little banner there. I'm going to cut the tag and hanger off of this sign. 
easily enough done. And then we're going to work on staining this wood. This is just a beautiful piece. I love, I love, love, love this piece of wood. You can see all the grain in it. It's just, it's really pretty. And to think that you get that for a dollar, it's pretty amazing. All right, so I've shaken up that stain and I'm, or that tint, and I'm just going to start brushing this on this wood. It does not have a foul smell. It is very easy to clean up. I just use a paper towel to wipe off my cutting mat. I've been using this to paint on, and it works pretty good. It's thick, won't let anything get on my table underneath. And you just try to go with the grain of the wood. It just happens to look better that way, and it's very pretty. I'm gonna take a dry paper towel and just start kind of wiping that off. Again, kind of with the grain. You can see some of it comes off, some of it stays on the wood. It's very subtle, but it is a gray color and it's really pretty. I'll show you the difference. So here's, there you go. You can see the natural side, and then after it's dried, we're gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna use some of this masking tape to cover up the hole in the back. I wasn't entirely sure how to fill this hole in in the first place because it would take a lot of lightweight spackle to fill in that. So I have another way that I'm gonna disguise it. No problem. See there, that fits almost entirely to the end and that's gonna work for me. I'm just kinda looking at it to see how centered I can actually make it. And just kinda look by eye first and then grab my ruler and look at a couple of points here, and pull it down where it needs to be. And then I'm just using my clamp so that it doesn't slide around when I start gluing it. And it's just, you know, kind of a guide for me so it doesn't move. I'm just gonna add dots and lines underneath there. I was trying to be really delicate at first because I was afraid it might show through this paper, but it's pretty thick. It's almost like a fabric. It's, you know, thicker than cardstock. And then I'm just going to clamp it just to make sure I don't pull anything loose when I go to the other side to glue it down. Same thing here. So how's everybody feeling today? Are we crafting? Are we in the Christmas spirit yet? I know I am. Alright, so I've chosen these stars. I was going to use wreaths in the beginning, little tiny wreaths, but I think these stars look great. I got them from the thrift store. They're just wooden and they are, it looks like somebody had brushed them with some gold paint. It's a really pretty muted gold. I like it. I did make a mess here, so I'm just going to go back over with some ribbon and kind of trim this out. And this came from Dollar Tree, this ribbon. It is a very neutral color and it has just a little bit of a gold trim. And I don't mind that. I'm not, you know, I'm not huge into metallics, but I think at Christmas time, it's time to, to bring out your bright, shiny everything, right? Bright, shiny, everything, or your shiny brights, whatever you have. And it just, I don't know, it just brings a little joy to me. You know, the little sparkle, the way the light catches it. It's those little things, you know? Be sure that you cut your angles so that they kind of match the angle on the end of your sign there. It's like a dovetail, so just be sure that you get your slant right. Make it nice and, and finished and pretty. And then you can start placing down the stars. And you see that covers up that hole perfectly. I didn't even need to do all that work with the tape on the back, but that's okay. You live, you learn. Now I'm just trying to make sure that I get the angles right because it would drive me nuts if they were not matchy when I got done. But you see there, I got it right. All right, so then now we have holes in the end where the hangers were. I'm just taking a little bit of brown paint that looked a little grayish brown to me. It turns out it really doesn't match that well, but it does cover up the white from the spackle that I put in there. You can leave this alone if you want. You could cover it up with something else, but you're going to see shortly that I'm going to fix it completely. All right, now we're going to take a piece of this jute. This is thick jute. I got it from the thrift store, but you can certainly get it from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put two knots layered right on top of one another. And you can see how I slide the knots down so that they aren't separated. Cut it off close to the knot with one end being a little bit long. And you're going to do the same thing again so that you have two of these. Cut it off right next to the knot without cutting through it. And then I'm going to make sure that my little pieces here are the same size. And we're going to glue this string on the back. And the reason I left it kind of long in the beginning because I wanted to see how much I wanted that string to poke out, you know, once it is hung up. 
I don't want it to be very long. I want it to fit like above a door. So this would be a good length, just like that. Just a little hot glue and a little masking tape. Now I'm gonna take those little knotted sections there and I'm gonna glue those down with a knot down and the rope hanging out. This gives the illusion that that rope is going through your sign. And I didn't have to get out the drill to drill another hole to actually hang it through there. But you can certainly do that. You know, it's an option. But there you go. And I think it turned out pretty good. Follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. The next one is a Rustic Noel wreath. So this is a grapevine wreath that I have used for several crafts. And I'm gonna use it again. I've probably had this thing for 20 years. It is about 15 inches. You can use whatever you like. And then I have some thrifted picks that are absolutely gorgeous. It looks like they came from Michael's about 100 years ago. There you go. But they're really pretty and they're not frosted and I wanted to do something that wasn't frosted in this wreath. I've got some Southern Living ribbon that was thrifted. The little snowflake ribbon on the side was thrifted, and then the other two came from Dollar Tree. The bigger ones are wired, just so you know. Now these particular picks happen to kind of give you the option of having them flat on the back, which I love because I don't have to do so much arranging. I start off by poking the stem down into here, but you can see that this is a struggle. I actually cut my pinky finger doing this. I'm telling you, I have the thinnest skin ever. I think it goes along with being a redhead with freckles. We just don't have a lot of collagen. Now I'm going to use a piece of this wire and I'm going to go into like the center without pressing anything down and then wrap it around the back. It's so funny. I watch other crafters. I, I, I'm not as good about it as I used to be, but I was watching Trish from Crafting Cousins and she did a wreath that just reminded me so much of this. I just you know, creative minds think alike, I believe. You should check her out, her and Kay out at Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm gonna continue around here and I'm just sort of doing a semicircle and I'm layering them with the stems downward and then just wiring them down to that frame where they need to be wired. Next, we're gonna work on this bow. Guys, this is a gorgeous, bow. If you are into bows, you are going to love this one. So we're going to use 10 inch loops. And I think I mentioned this is wired ribbon. So we're going to one, two, three. And then I'm just counting here to see how many I got. So you're going to loop it over on itself three or four times. And then you can trim it off and go on to your next ribbon. This is some thick stuff. I love this ribbon. Then we're gonna go to the next one and it's gonna be about 10 inches. I think I managed to get it a little bit smaller when I was folding, but that's okay. Gonna continue to go folding, folding over on itself and then cut it off. It doesn't have to be the same amount of loops as the other one, by the way, just whatever you wanna do. So now this one, and this is thrifted also, and I got this from, um, I think this comes from maybe Michael's or Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. I believe I've seen it when I've been in there shopping before. Really pretty, it's got little pearl beads on the side, just really pretty. So now I'm gonna bend this in half, this stack, and I'm gonna take my scissors, try to line my edges up and just cut into it. You wanna cut through that edge and barely into the burlap or the fabric, whichever ribbon you're using. I'm folding again to find my center point. Cut just through the wire, just through the wire, because this isn't burlap, it's thinner. And then this one, because it is so thick, I'm using my pliers here, my little cutters, to just cut into the wire and a little bit into the burlap. So now we are going to start stacking this bow. Make sure that your loops are on top and that that free edge, that straight edge is on the bottom. Those are gonna be the tails, those straight parts. So we're gonna take a, <laughs> I doubted if I was gonna be able to get this entire bunch into this zip tie, but it worked. So um, yeah, you're gonna take a zip tie for this one. It's gonna take a lot of tugging on this bow to get it all fluffed out. The struggle is real, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it is so worth it. So worth it. All the work, 
and I like it. There's something about touching all that fabric, pulling all of those pieces apart, and seeing what it comes up to look like. Because when you first do it, it just looks like, you know, panels of fabric or panels of ribbon. It's flat, and you start questioning things, and then as you fluff from the bottom upward, that's how I do it, you just start to see this beautiful form start to take shape. Look at that, already it's starting to look so much better. Now you can cut off those little tails or you can dovetail them, whichever way you wanna do it. Be sure that the pretty side is up and generally you can flip those over if it's a good quality um, fabric. This particular ribbon wasn't very good quality so I didn't even bother with it, I just cut those off. And then going on to the burlap and the other ribbon, I thought those would look nice dovetailed. Give it a little more dimension and I think that looks pretty. And we're gonna continue along dovetailing. You know how to do that. And this kind of keeps the frays out of your bows too so you don't have anything frayed out. You want it to look high end, right? And if you gave something like this as a gift, nobody would ever know it was handmade. It's just so pretty. Look at the colors. What do you think about the burlap, the white, and the silver? Is that not stunning? Oh, I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so now we need tails for the ribbon. So I'm just gonna stretch out my ribbon, and I'm gonna go 18 inches. That's how long this ruler is. I'm gonna cut it off, and I'm gonna do 18 inches also of this one. And then the burlap ribbon with the pearls, it's probably 20 inches long, and I left it long. That's all I had left of that ribbon. So I'm gonna finish it off. Okay, so they're dovetailed and I'm stacking them. And you can just decide which way that you wanna stack it. You know, which one you want in the back, which one you want in the front, how you want it to lay down. Um, if you have different patterns, you know, decide how you wanna do your patterns. For me, the idea is to give it some variety and kind of separate it, but to be sure that all of them get a little bit of attention. So I wanted to let that snowflake piece be on top. Taking another zip tie, we're gonna go around the center, cinch it really well and trim it off. And then we're gonna find our placement on this beautiful wreath. So you can go down low and fill the whole thing in, or you can leave a little space on the side, which is what I ended up doing to put another piece there. So I'm just wrapping some wire around and tying it and twisting it and then I'm gonna thread some wire through this bow on the bottom and then put it on as close as I can to the greenery without overlapping it. Twist it around in the back and then press it into your wreath so you don't have any wires hanging out. And again with the fluffing. Yes, yes, you must always do this. Always, always. And for the love of Pete, if you ever take a wreath out of a box, please fluff it before you hang it on your wall. It's gonna make so much difference. I promise you, you'll be so much happier with it. So I'm just kind of playing around with the tails here to see what I wanna do. And then that's when it hit me. I think I need to do another project. So here comes the Noel mini sign, which you can use on your wreath or by itself. So I'm just gonna take a really pretty Christmas card. I got it at the thrift store. You can get beautiful cards at Dollar Tree or anywhere else you wanna go. I just weakened that seam with my fingernails, flipping it back and forth, and then put my ruler on it and pulled it off nicely. Now I'm just using my finger to roll the little edge under. This came from Kirkland's, but I thrifted it. And I'm gonna use some of this medium gray folk art paint, and I'm gonna start painting over this sign. Now if you use a flat brush like I'm using, you can see how I'm doing it to get close to the edge where you don't have to tape it off. Isn't that great? Just kind of push it upward, push it upward, and then pull it back. Perfect. You can do your corners that way. Easy, easy. And you're saving yourself some time without having to use all that tape. So we're gonna, it's not, you can still see a little bit through it, but it'll be covered by the card. So once it's dry, you're gonna take that card. And I love that it matches perfectly to the color in this card. I'm just gonna add some hot glue. You can put this on any way you like. But using hot glue, I could always peel this card off and use the frame for another project. Okay, so you could use it just like that on your coffee bar or anywhere else. But I'm gonna add a wire because we're gonna add this to the wreath. 
Easiest project ever, right? Easiest one ever. Okay, so wrapping some wire around it. We're gonna set it down on the wreath, right where the tails of the bow and the greenery meet. It's gonna cover up that stem and give it a little more interest. Twist that tie around it, and there you have it. I'm gonna use, it's trying to fold over just a little bit, you know, hang over, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to help secure it. A couple of dots on the frame uh, and on the wreath and on the ribbon. And our next project is a cozy yarn Christmas tree. This is another easy one. Okay, so I thrifted this very fuzzy, soft, comfy, fat yarn. It's blanket yarn. I've got some Dollar Tree twine there with some berries and a couple of pieces of wood scraps and then another one of those stars. Here's some more ribbon that coordinates with the stuff we've already been using. I'm gonna take this cone and sit it down right on top of a piece of felt. I'm pretty sure you can get white felt at Dollar Tree. I think it's rolled up and it's in the craft section. So just a tad of the cooler temperature hot glue to go down on here because that foam will melt. I wanna have a good base because I don't wanna burn myself or have anything collapse. You can also wrap this in tape, but this is so much quicker. And I had it on hand, so that makes it great. All right, just folding it under and I'm going to add a little bit of glue there. For the tip of it, I wanna make it a little bit taller and thinner. So I'm just gonna fold the tip over. You can see what I'm doing with a little of the glue. And then I'm just gonna start trying to form it as best I can to give it a little more of a cone type shape without having that flat top. And I'm just going to keep doing that with my glue and my fingers. You can buy me a coffee to show me some love. The link's in the description box below. Okay, so I'm just kind of pressing it with my fingers and you can see it looks kind of crazy, but it won't look like that when we're done. It does give a little more height to the tree though. All right, so I'm going to lay this down where it is slightly overlapping the edge so that you don't see the bottom of that foam. And then using a cooler temp glue, of course, and protecting my fingers tremendously, I'm gonna go around this tree just like this. I am put that line close to the other line of yarn, that other row, and then pressing those together. In the end, if there are any spots that are a little bit bare, you can fill those in, just a little more glue, and just kind of pressing them together. That's the beauty of this fluffy yarn. It's like furry, it's got like a, you know, a blanket texture. It's easy, easy to work with. So I'll show you how we're gonna do the tip of it so that it actually sticks down. The glue needs to be really close to the row that is underneath it, just like this, and I'm pushing downward toward that row, rolling it kind of downward. Okay, so we're up to the top. I'm gonna add some glue here, and I'm just gonna kind of swirl it, almost like a cinnamon roll, on the top until all of that white is covered, and then just trim it off. You can use a little more hot glue there, and just continue that little, that little swirl. So see, I had a little gap, and I just added some glue and then pressed it down. Little gap there, it's where it's trying to come apart, no problem. A little bit of glue, we can fix it. You can't see any of the white now, can you? And it looks like a little tree, a little fuzzy tree. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue in the bottom, pretty much where I think the center would be, and I'm going to use the stick for the trunk. I'm going to poke that in there, and then this little slice is going to be the base. It's going to hold the tree up, so be sure that your stand is big enough that your tree will not make it topple over. And I might just add that the cone is lightweight and this yarn is very lightweight. If you use anything that's heavier like rope, you're gonna probably need a little more security to keep your tree from toppling over. All right, so we're gonna take some of these pit berries, start unwinding it a bit, and I'm just gonna place a tiny bit, I mean, just a, just a snidge on this tree. And you can see that I'm just trying to hold it in place. I had a viewer when I did a project before who said that I could have used pins to hold something to styrofoam, and I thought, you know what, that is genius. I cannot remember who said it, but thank you very much because I remembered that, and I'm gonna be applying it in this project. I'm gonna use my pins from my little vintage pin thing here, 
and I'm going to go right where the berries meet. This is where the wire is a little thicker. It's wrapped in like a paper. And I'm going to go right in between there and press it straight into my tree. And it holds it beautifully. And I have no messy glue strings, nothing like that. It's just perfect. Look at that. Okay, so now I've decided that I want to use some ribbons on the top of the tree. Kind of give it a tree topper, if you will. So I'm going to do about 18 inches of the snowflake ribbon. Oh, that snowflake ribbon actually came from Big Lots. I said Dollar Tree, but it's from Big Lots. And we're going to make some very, very easy little shoelace bows. And you know how to do this. Make the two ears, wrap them around. Simple. However you make a little bow like this, you can do it. And I'm just working with it to make it small. I don't want anything that's going to overpower my tree. And I'm going to leave my tails long. I'm just twisting it to make sure that the gold is on the outside. And then we're going to do the same thing with this other little ribbon. Okay, then a little bit of hot glue. We can stick these two together. And then we'll use a pin to attach it to the tree right in the center. Perfection. I love it. I'm going to just kind of play with those little tails a little bit and I keep struggling to get that one to turn over but it will stay. It gave up the fight and then I'm just cutting my little tails at an angle. You could dovetail them if you wanted but they're so small. I thought just a little slant would be enough to make it look finished and loved. Now right in the bottom of this star. I'm going to put some hot glue and then press it down on the top toward the front near the bows. And that's how she's going to look. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's so cute. So cute. And it's really making me want to do gray and white and silver and gold for Christmas theme. Now for my age 10 owl I'm going to use this gorgeous little Avon perfume holder. I find these kind of things all the time at the thrift store and I've never thought to get one and use it for anything, but I'll be picking them up from now on. Look at all the class and beauty in that little thing. I'm going to take some Rust-Oleum Satin Nickel Spray Paint and after I give that thing a good bath inside and out, I'm going to spray it and then we're going to add some of this wax to it. So I took it apart and spray painted the two different pieces so we wouldn't have any gaps, just like that, and put it back together. And she looks great already, right? Wait till you see what happens when you put the wax on it. I've never used the white wax before, but I am sold on it. I love being a plaid ambassador. You get to try so many things and I love showing you guys different things and new techniques and this is just, you're going to love this. I think you're really going to like it. So I'm just using this little brush that came from Dollar Tree and I'm swirling it into all of those textured areas on the owl's face. And it's almost like a feather pattern and all around his eyes, all around it, just like that. We'll be doing the bottom in just a minute. I was worried when I did this at first because I thought, oh, I think I waited about like, just a few seconds and then I used my paper towel to start wiping it away. And I'm just stunned by the way this looks. This is absolutely gorgeous. It looks old. It looks like an antique. Um, look at that. Look how it brings out all of the dimension in those feathers. It's just, I'm amazed. I'm really amazed. So then I thought, okay, this is cool. This, this is going to work. And I went ahead and did all the bottom too. So all of his body got a good brush of this paint. Well, of this wax. And then again, wiping that off just a little bit. And then, of course, you're going to have to let it dry. But it's so pretty by itself. I really didn't have to do anything else. But since it's Christmas time, we're going to give him a little bit more. So I'm going to use a piece of greenery that I pulled off of another pick. I'm going to use a little bit of this jute. I'm going to wrap it around where the, I guess it would be the neck. 
It's where the bottle top meets the bottom. I'm going to kind of pull it down just a little bit. And then this is actually going to be too big. As you can see here, it's too big. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Not a problem. I do this all the time. Just a little minor surgery till we can get this looking exactly how we want it. Sorry, I'm out of range there. I got so excited with the waxing, I just totally stopped paying attention to the camera. So, then we're going to tie that on. You can just tie a little double knot. That'll hold it in place. And then trim off the excess. You could do a bow if you wanted, but I really wanted the attention to be on the owl itself, and I didn't want to do too much to take away from his beauty. I'm going to add another pick on the top with a little bit of hot glue. Just kind of nestling it down there where the, the piece of the jute rope and the other greenery is. And you could stop right there if you wanted. But I think I'm going to add a little of this because it's going to help kind of bring all of our crafts in together. They're going to be coordinated. So with a little hot glue I'm just going to put a couple of cut pieces into the little greenery pick. Just like that. So pretty. Oh my goodness. I want to put wax on everything now. There won't be anything in my house that's not waxed. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue just to put that piece of greenery down. And then here are our projects. So I said five projects because they are actually five, but one of them is kind of two in one. There's our tree here. simple farmhouse just really pretty and then the beautiful owl love him the Merry Christmas sign and then of course the wreath on top with the sign on it that's our two-in-one I hope that you try some of these do you like this color theme I'm loving it I'm loving it. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you. You bring me joy. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.